Hi, folks. Um, welcome back. Thank you guys for coming back. I see we have a wonderful house, so I'm thrilled. This week, so this, first of all, this marks our 11th show. So um, uh, we have a really, really wonderful show. This is a full-length play. Um, today you're going to see Act 1, and then next week you'll see Act 2. And just as we've done in the past, we, um, we will take Act 1 and we will put it online probably tomorrow night or Sunday, and then you'll be able to go and catch up by next week in case you want to see it again. And if you want to invite friends to come in and to Act 2 who happen to miss Act 1, they'll be able to um, catch up and we'll all be on the same page. Okay, so without further ado, we bring you Anna by Savannah. This is a play by Devin O'Brien, and it's starring Joanna Merlin as Anna, Kelsey Griswold as Savannah, and Hunter Paul as the man, directed by Martha Gaiman. Anna by Savannah by Devin O'Brien. Time, 1983. Setting, New York City, Anna's Park Avenue penthouse. Stage left, Anna's bedroom. A double bed, bedside table, and an upholstered chair, and a bureau with stuff on it. A clock, wilting plants, and a water can. The stage left wall is windows that look onto a cityscape of water towers and rooftops. Stage right, the living room, a faux leather recliner and a repro of a Baroque bureau. The rooms are connected by a corridor with a closet. All is makeshift, temporary, and befits an apartment that serves as a way station for a soul, Anna, who loiters in one world and waits to be vaulted to the next. Downstage right is a doorway that leads to the kitchen. Upstage is the front door. It is heavy and resents, or at any rate, resists use and discourages egress. Lights up. A spotlight on Anna. Anna is adrift in darkness. Where she is in time and space is indeterminable, unimportant. The one thing which locates her in a reality we may know is the newspaper she reads, the New York Post. You ever picture yourself old? Nope. I never did either. Blackout. Lights up. The morning room is incandescent as a match just struck. Anna reads in bed. The front door opens. Savannah enters. Anna does not register the sound. Savannah sets down her things, a newspaper, a brown paper bag, and her handbag on the bureau. Hello. Well, well. Savannah enters bedroom. Hello. Did somebody tell you I was dying today? No. Is that why you're here today? Nobody told me I'm here every day. How are you? I'm having a baby. That's why I'm in bed. Good. Good for you. Ah, oh, stupid things you do in life. Too many abortions, too few babies. How many? Abortions? No. Two. First Miriam, then, then Mickey. What are you doing? I'm, uh, Picking things up and putting them back where they go. Is it too early to call Mickey and tell him to tell his wife to drop dead? Yes. Yes, it is. Imagine my Mickey, a guy with everything, looks and money in his pocket, goes and marries herself. She, who already has two kids by three different husbands. Three kids by two different husbands. What? Uh, she had three kids by two different husbands. What you just said isn't possible. Well, at any rate, already an established firm. Feel that plant. I don't remember when I watered it last. It's okay. What? It's a little damp. Yes, she was a tramp. Sure, everybody knew it. No, the plant. I think you should give it a drink. I watered it yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. What good does that do us today? All right, all right. Savannah takes the watering can, waters plant. Plants can't talk, you know, and tell you when they're thirsty. 
I take good care of them. What's going to happen to them when I die? I often wonder that. I look at them and I wonder. I look at your ceiling and wonder. It's falling down. So what should we do, Henny Penny? Hold it up? Why don't you call the manager? Mr. Nimkov? That's right. And tell him to fix it? Sure. And say what? You say, I am Savannah Chase, Miss Anna's nurse in Penthouse West. Mr. Nimkov, that's who I am. And we are in the bedroom all day long, and the ceiling is dropping little, little crumbs or whatever, whatever you want. You give him a description. You're an actress. Tell him. Tell him, and he'll send somebody to fix it. It might take days. So, so I'm going somewhere. That's true. You don't seem to be going anywhere. Sure, call him. I pay a lot of money for maintenance. Nobody bought this place for me. Nobody gave me a dollar my whole lifetime. I never went to school. At 13 and a half years, I supported my family. I never opened a pay envelope, not once. Ah, I remember my brother, he nearly grabbed it for me. I picked up a rock and I said, you do try and take what belongs to me, I'll kill you. Oh, I guess you already heard that story. Well, at least you were listening. You ready? When, when am I not? Savannah exits, then enters carrying a tray table with a bagel on a plate and a cup of coffee and places the tray on the bed. How old am I? 90 years old. A baby. That's right. A big baby. You want your paper? Does ever a day go by when I don't want my paper? When I was a girl, I read the paper every day, the Brooklyn Eagle for a nickel. I'll take yesterday's, give me yesterday's. Anna and Savannah read and eat. I am getting very annoyed with Ronald Reagan. Well, it's a free country. Anybody can become president if he's got enough money. Want me to read your horoscope? I have a horoscope. Yeah, every day. I don't believe in astronomy, honey. I didn't, I didn't even know I had a horoscope. Astrology. And, or that either. When's your birthday? November 15th. Mm-hmm. What sign are you? What size? Sign. Astrological sign. <laughs> You're a Scorpio. Oh, what does that mean? Scorpio is the sex symbol of the zodiac. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. When was Lewis's? <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Your husband? When was his birthday? Oh, I don't remember. You know, the first time he saw me, he fainted. Hold on. Where are you going? I thought you just got here. I, I have to make sure that the door is locked. In the living room, Savannah extracts from her handbag a small machine, a tape recorder. She takes it with her into the bedroom. You anticipating a visitor or an uh, intruder? Savannah places the tape recorder behind the watering can. She turns it on and the red LED glows. Not anticipating either. I wanted to lock the door, that's all. Nobody comes here, honey. My Mickey's in California. My daughter is 3,000 miles away in Europe. What she sees in Europe is beyond me. Your mother was from Europe. My mother, my mother. Oh, she came here from Germany. She was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. Her first husband had died. Can you imagine coming to the new world by yourself? at 25 and not knowing a soul? I can, actually. 
we had a place in Brooklyn over a shop and there were all these boys around. I was so pretty. I mean, I, I didn't look the way I do now. And, and he didn't have, he didn't have his long pants. So I was looking out the window with my mother and I said, who's that one? And he was looking at me and his pal throws a ball and it hit him on the head. <laughs> what did he do? We were laughing and laughing. We always said that when Lula saw me, something hit him. <laughs> did something hit you? Oh, yes. But my mother feared it. Stay away from that one, she said. She didn't like him. Well, he had flair. Mm. He didn't sleep at night, he read. He attended the McGregor School of Typing and Stenography. When was his birthday? July 8th. Right, that's good. Uh, uh, what sign was he? I don't know. He was a cancer. Oh, honey, he was worse than that. He looked at a woman, he owned her. He started in lace. There was an ad, a, a man needed a secretary, only his wife was jealous because she didn't want a girl. And they, you know, they, they, how many boys are stenographers? Pretty soon, Lewis wanted to try and sell. Well, the way that kid talked, it's like there was a dictionary in his mouth. He went to a couple of houses and he came back with a couple of orders. The boss says, get off the typewriter, you're a salesman. What's that? What's what? That red thing. Red thing? That thing there, is it, is it not a light? No. Oh, but, but it is red. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm not, I'm not crazy. Do you want to hear your horoscope? Sure. Sure. Let's hear it. The recreational possibilities are endless. It says, never be ashamed of your past. Tell me your month of birth and I'll read yours. Capricorn. At work? Do not take on more tasks than you can handle. <laughs> I wasn't expecting such a funny answer. <laughs> What's so funny about that? I don't, I don't see any danger in that. <laughs> I come here to work. You come here to rest. <sighs> okay, if you think that working for you is easy, then I just... <laughs> well, listen, honey, what, what do you know about work? I did very well, but for every dollar, I, I sweat blood. I had a business of bed jackets and the makers would send back the jackets just out of the machine with all the threads hanging. So I cut off every thread. I ironed every bed jacket. I folded them in pretty colored paper and I put them in a box so that when you opened them, they looked like ice cream. <laughs> You're a nice girl, but you don't know that much. Anna returns to a newspaper. Savannah goes to the window. Oh, bumblebee tuna on sale. Bean hash. I've never heard of it. Have you? What is it? What did you see? Nothing. There's nothing. Really? And lions, eagles, and partridges, and lurid deer and geese, spiders, silent fishes that dwell in the deep, starfishes and creatures unseen to the eye, all living things, all living things have completed their mournful cycle. The cranes no longer wake in the meadows with a cry. Bay beetles no longer hum in the groves. The mournful moon now lights its lamp in vain. It is cold, cold, 
it is empty, empty. It is terrifying, terrifying. You practicing? Yes, so? Sarah Bernhardt, that's what I call you. Why don't you find yourself a husband? I don't want a husband. Have some babies. I don't want babies. Maybe I'm happy the way that I am. Nobody's happy, honey, without a family. Why do old people always tell young people what to do? As if they are the experts on everyone. As if having a prehistory birth date gives you the right to tell people how to live. Ignoring our desires and our dreams as if because I'm young, I'm a dope or an idiot. And yet you lie there in your bed all day long and you tell stories all day long about what it was like when you were young. I mean, doesn't, doesn't that strike you as somewhat ironic? I just noticed that your eyes are between green and brown. That's right. Yeah, they're almost like yours. Yes, but have we seen the same things? Did, do we evaluate the same thing in the same way? I don't think so. God. Savannah stands, exits to living room. She grabs her handbag and re-enters the bedroom and sits in her chair. She rummages through the bag, studies baggies of pills. When she finds the pill she is looking for, she snaps it in half and tosses it into her mouth swallows. My head hurts. Anna goes back to her paper. Savannah goes to the window. Is he there? He's not there. It's raining. Sure he's there. You can't see him. No. Get the binoculars. Okay. I see him. He's working, sure. He's got a wife to support. Okay, where is he? He's on the ledge there. You see where the ladder is? You see the ladder on a house there? Across the street, you see a house with ladders? I see a house with lots of ladders. Which ladder? The one nearer to us. And by it, you see a little man in a white uniform. Behind the ladder? Alongside of it, a little, a little further down. Okay, which ladder are we talking about? The one high up or the one low down? The one closest to us, the first one. Okay, it's hard to tell which ladder is closer. Only one can be closer. The one on the left? That's right. Okay, and where is he? On the ledge, wearing a uniform. Don't you see him? I see pipes. Oh, give them to me. <laughs> No, 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 no. There you see, that's him. He's moving. And he's working in the rain. Why is a man working on the roof in the rain? Well, I suppose that he has a family and he need, they need food. You know, in America, not everyone is rich. Most people are poor, the majority. Only they make a better living here with unions. Savannah moves to the bedside, adjusts pillows. How's that? Not so good. Okay. How is that? Not good. Something is off. Savannah removes a large silver framed picture from the bed sheets. What is this doing here? It's Mickey. I know it's Mickey. What's Mickey doing here? Hey, hey, where are you going with Mickey? Okay, he doesn't go here. He goes in the other room. I'm putting him back. You'll be back? Yes. Anna returns to the post. Savannah exits and enters the living room, places the picture on the bureau top. Oh, oh, oh. That TV actress had a private audience with the Pope? Who does she think she is? Oh, she's in a movie now. God, it was how many years? Since I've seen a movie. I was in a movie. You could see me in a movie. How big a part you got? I don't want to see a walk-on. I want to see you in a picture. Is it in a theater? Not anymore. You know what I mean, a part? I have a part. How many lines you got? 
maybe eight. Uh huh. And uh, how much did you make? A thousand dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money for someone your age. <laughs> well, it's already gone. You spend it already? Every penny. You think I still have that money? I mean, that was in March. Uh, what's it? What's it now? November. Uh huh. Who who would who would marry a woman that spent it a thousand dollars? I need to live. I need to pay for the subway and eat. I have to pay for my acting classes and my rent and. What you 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 mean you're still taking lessons? My acting teacher says an artist is always working on her craft. Stanislavski says that an artist must ask herself ten times a day. What if? Oh, honey, you're, you're not that smart. I can play any show without taking a lesson. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You are so wrong and so sure. That's what made me a success. The very word you just said, sure. I am sure, sure. When I had a lousy bed jacket, I was sure it was lousy. But when I was selling it, oh, how beautiful. Look at that pattern. Isn't it beautiful? And then when I was showing an apartment next to a firehouse and the out-of-towners would complain about the noise, I'd say, oh, sure, it's a little noisy, but New York is a city that the robs with life. Savannah goes straight to her handbag, removes a gritty paper back, and snatches Anna's newspaper. Hey, what are, what are you what are you doing? Why why are you taking my paper? Show me. What's this? A book of speeches. Pick one. Show me what an actress you are. A book of speeches. What? Okay. Okay. I'll do the first one I see. I can't see. I need the light. Okay. Okay. Who are you? It says here, Emily. Emily. Okay. Our town. Go. Mama, I'm here. Oh, Mama. Just look at me one minute as though you really saw me. Mama, I can't. It all goes so fast. We don't have time to look at one another. But first, wait, one more look. Goodbye world, goodbye Grover's Corners. Goodbye to clocks ticking and mama's sunflowers and food and coffee and sleeping and waking up. Oh, earth, you are too wonderful for anyone to realize you. Now give me back my paper. Savannah takes her book back and gives the newspaper Anna Reeves. Oh, they're playing a picture with Spencer Tracy and his girl. Catherine Hepburn? Yeah, that's the one. Catherine Hepburn. She too wasted her life. <gasps> oh, did you see this? See what? The story about the smooth talking rapist. No, I've hardly seen the paper. You've been hogging the paper all day. The things that happen to girls in this city. A smooth-talking middle-aged man was being hunted today for raping and sodomizing an 18-year-old Bronx girl, oh my God, during a three-day terror ordeal in a posh midtown hotel. The Sex Crime Squad proposed to publish an artist rough, rough sketch. Oh, please, I don't want to see the sketch. You don't want to hear it? Go on. The victim, 
a frail brunette, answered an ad for a receptionist in the November 8th New York Times. The man called had asked her to come to the hotel. Oh boy. When she arrived, the man, dapperly dressed, invited her up to a room where he said he wanted to interview her and take measurements. Oh my God almighty. Oh, I would have believed him. Then he suddenly twisted her arm behind her, handcuffed at her, ripped off her clothes, forced her to have, forced her to have what? To have oral sex? Think of it, that bastard. The girl was attacked numerous times over the next three days. Oh my God. I think I'd sacrifice my life and slash him up. I'd pull his eyes right out of their sockets. All right, that's enough. What they featured it in the paper, so you can. I, I, I just don't like to hear it, really. I don't. don't. Don't don't act. You're not on the stage. Well, I'm sorry. I read it to you. Me too. What's on the next page? I'm not done with this page. What's on the next? Oh, Jesse Jackson. Gee, I, I would love to see a colored man run for residency or for the high office, but not this one. He's a, he's a nothing. They read. What was that? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. Where is that coming from? I don't know. It sounds like um, the noise that a microphone makes. It sounds like a bird. It sounds like when you tap on a microphone that's on. <sighs> it's eerie, isn't it? Huh. Hey, Reed. This is weird. It sounds like it's coming from the closet. Oh, come on. We don't have a visitor in the closet. It's the telephone. It's No, it's from here. It's from the fire alarm. It's from the telephone. No, it's, it's from the smoke detector. Listen. Oh, come on. That thing's been here for years. Never makes a sound. See? It's a smoke detector. Why should it be that? There is no smoke. I don't know. It's not working properly. Listen. That thing's been here long before you. It's never made a sound. It must be broken or something. Savannah flops on the bed. You hear those blips? What is that? It's the smoke detector. It's the telephone. I'm going to put the phone on your chest and you can tell me if the sound is coming from the telephone. What's that, do you think? What's what? Well, if you didn't hear it, I, I, I'm not going to start all over again. Oh. Did you hear that blip? What blip? Oh, you're dangerous. You feel all right today? Oh, I'm all right. You're not. Do you? Want me to call the doctor? Just, just, just listen to a blip in a little while. I, I wonder what it is. That. You didn't hear that? Oh, forget it. You're not going to make me crazy. That's for sure. I'm, I'm better at it than you are. All night long, you hear ambulances, fire engines. Oh my god. I wonder what that is. What what is? Never mind. You don't hear those sirens out there? No, I hear them. I know you do. I know you hear the blips too. This is not a laughing matter. You notice something. You you try and figure out what it is. See how easy it is for someone to put someone else in the mental asylum? I know that for a fact. I've seen it in my life. And this too shall pass. 
right now, I miss my husband. He would know what to do and how to do it. You should see the poems he wrote to me. I'd like to sometime. Sometime means not now. Something is off. Savannah goes to Anna's bed and wrestles with something. She removes a Polaroid camera from the sheets. Where did this come from? Savannah starts to exit. Where, where are you going with that? I'm going to put it in the living room. Did you want it in your bed? Savannah enters the living room, places the Polaroid on the bureau top. Savannah enters the bedroom, sits. He was not faithful. Not at all. Women just fell in love with him, although he was not tall or handsome. He was a gambler. Is that a red light? What? Uh, no. Because it looks like one. Was he a gambler? Oh, you bet he was. He bet on anything. Whether the next thing around the corner would be a man, a woman, or a family. Whether, whether you would have a bowel movement at nine in the morning. <laughs> He was gambling with the Luciano gang. And if you don't pay the if you don't pay your debts, they slit your throat. We had an estate. Our living room was 36 feet long, and his desk was in the opposite corner. And I can see that he's crying. And I thought he was sick. So I hollered at him, what's the matter? I have to holler because I'm listening to Roosevelt on the radio and Hitler's ranting. My husband growled at me. I need $20,000 by Monday morning. Are you going to get it for me? It was Saturday night. I yelled back. Sure. You had the money. My husband had a closet as big as this room in his closet was a little iron safe. So one day I'm playing hide and seek with Mickey and I say, don't hide in the safe. And Mickey says, I know the combination. He tells me, I write it down, put him to bed and try the combination. The safe was packed with money. A hundred dollar bills fall out. I started to steal. You stole? Yes, I'm a good thief. Every day I open the little safe and if I can't take $500 bills, I take three. A week goes by, two weeks, and he doesn't notice. So I go to a bank and I open an account and in no time, I had $5,000 in every bank from Somerville to Newark. So he hollers back at me, where are you going to get it? I said, simple. I stole it out of the little safe. I never saw a face put on a calm like that. Oh, what a story. Monday morning, I put him on the train with a check for $20,000. As the train pulled out, there were tears in that man's eyes. He was waving kisses. Oh, I'm freezing. What? Isn't, isn't it summer? It's November. What do I know? Maybe I'm dead and I don't even know it. Maybe I'm dead and I don't even know it. Oh, honey, what are you talking about? you got a family to create and a family to raise. Your work is still before you. I'm done. You've got an awful long way to go. I went through it. All those things, some of them beautiful, some of them not. What was that? What's what? 
You want some coffee? You got any? Sure. I'll take some. I don't understand why I'm so sad. I'm an old fashioned girl. And I think of olden times. Das kommt mir nicht aus dem Sinn. You don't know how after you leave and shut the door. I lie here and sing the songs my mother and I sang. Did your mother used to sing German songs? Oh, she knew every German song you ever heard. All my mother's songs I can sing. Uh, there you go. You know how long ago my mother used to sing those songs? 80 years. You're right. Why do I think of them now, I wonder? I don't know. Need anything else? Uh, were you going to bring me water? Oh, there's your water. I thought, I thought I ordered coffee. Oh, right. Yeah. The air is cool and it's not twilight. And calmly the river Rhine flows. I never did anything wrong. Why am I being punished? Is this coffee caffeinated? Yes. Did you know I want to be cremated? Yes. Need anything else? Nothing that I can think of. Did we get a paper today? It's uh, there on your bed. Oh, Joey Adams. What does he say? Joey Adams, you've heard of a bicycle built for two. She was built for two bicycles. <laughs> she gets a hangover just by sitting on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I never knew you were a giggler. I lost <laughs> me a job because I was a giggler. My friend and I, all I had to do was go like this. <laughs> you <would> break up. <laughs> Read my horoscope. Uh, yeah, it it says it says you are lucky to be born when you were born. You walk through lots piled with garbage. Lots with lots of rats. And sometimes you found wildflowers. You sang songs with your mother. Then there was no such thing as electricity. You put a hot brick in your bed to keep you warm. There were no motors then. Drowning, droning the calls of the birds and the insects. You were born then. Night was black then. Only day was light. There were empty lots for miles in Brooklyn, not just weeds jetting through concrete. You're lucky. That's what it says. You're, you went to the corner with your pail and waited while the dirty boy wrung milk from the cow's teat into it. Now, I go to the corner, I take my pail, and he fills it with pills. I get ecstasy. It relieves my malaise, my misery. I get pills in my pail. <laughs> How beautiful was the world then? 
so beautiful. Oh God. Give me a second. Maybe she is an actress after all. We were poor people in the days when there was no such thing as organized charity. If you didn't eat, you didn't eat. A lie was not allowed. Those were the days of innocence, honesty, decency. Yes, those were the days. Those were the days, my friend. <laughs> There was only one standard. You were right or you were wrong. You were virgin or you were not. We didn't know girls that slept with a guy. Today, it's a common thing. Then, that was a top whore. We didn't even use the word whore. We didn't know what it meant. I don't know if they were better days. We were so ignorant then. There was a bakery, Levy's. It still exists. You used to go there at the end of the day. They didn't use additives and after a day, the bread went bad. So people used to feed the birds with it. My mother would go and for a nickel, they would fill up a sack with yesterday's bread. And if there was a raisin in the sack, oh, delicacy. A raisin, a delicacy. The man eyes a silver frame picture he deftly extracts a photo and lets it drop to the floor. Carefully, he wraps the frame in a cloth and puts it in his backpack. The man sees the glass of water. He takes a long drink, emptying the glass. He sees the Polaroid camera. He takes it, aims it at Savannah, and snaps a picture of her slumped there. The flash flashes, lighting the stage. He rips out the film, flings it on the table. With the Polaroid camera in his backpack, the man exits and the heavy door shuts. Silence. Blackout. End of Act One. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, fantastic. I'm going to ask. Uh, Playwright Devin, Martha, our director, to pop back to pop on. Uh, Martha, also activate your audio, which is something that I should listen to more. <laughs> and uh, all right, everybody. So thank you. We have a huge house, a wonderful house. So thank you guys for coming. Um, we have about 10 minutes before 6 o'clock. We like to get everybody out by 6. So if you have any comments, um, you are more than welcome to raise your hand. Or you can, not in the Q&A section, but in the chat section, you can, um, you can chat a question or chat any comments that you would like to make. And I, I can tell you we have, we have lots of notes. Um, that was great, bravo. Um, April says, hi there, can't wait to watch the beautiful Kelsey. So that came in early. Shirley That's says, hi. Haircut, <laughs> haircut, Shirley. but thank you very much. One day soon, they're opening up, so I'm told. Shirley says, what an artful scene, loved it. Christine Bruno says, hi, Joanna, so nice to see you. And uh, Elizabeth Malloy says, to Devin, what was the inspiration? That was a beautiful, thank you guys for your incredible performances. It was really wonderful to watch. Um, I can't remember what the question was. It was... Um, what was the inspiration, Devin? What was the inspiration? Um, well, once upon a time, I knew an incredible lady who uh, inspired me with her incredible stories. And I was amazed at how well she, how well she knew how to do life and how um, her gumption to live when I myself felt, well, shall we say, clueless 
about how to uh, live life. So it was based on, uh, Anna was inspired by somebody I knew very well. Great, thank you. Um, Janet, I wanna, you're still on. Can you, are you still here? <laughs> Janet? <laughs> Janet, Janet, no, we still don't have Dan Janet. Um, <laughs> Uh, Renee Lawrence Cronin says, I'd love to hear more about the pros and cons about directing for Zoom and acting via Zoom. Bravo, cast, and creative. So Martha, that's you. Well, um, I'm really a Luddite. And so none of this could have happened without Todd, who was helping us yeah. with close-ups, when to be close, when to be far. And... I did some acting on Zoom, but this was really challenging. And I would have preferred about a month of rehearsals because um, as it was, we had to just make everything tight and fudge a lot of action in favor of uh, values from in the script and bring them to light. And I feel that no matter what, it's an extremely valuable artistic experience to have a community and to be working on a piece of material, no matter what the format, especially in this particular time that we're living in. But they are, it, it's very um, humbling because it makes all, it made all of us really work together. And I think it's really especially um, challenging for the actors because you don't know what what you're seeing and you don't know you don't know any of these things. And so, in a lot of ways, you have to rely on each each other. And um, I want to say it was a really fun experience, and we have another week to go because we're doing Act Two next week, which is. Um, really um the whole experience is very rewarding no matter what and especially with joanna and kelsey and of course devon i mean the whole thing is really rewarding all the way around so no matter what the challenges are you navigate together but i will say todd you're the captain you're that person the mermaid at the front of the ship thank goodness yes you're you're our captain kirk <laughs> thank, so, you. thank you. It's been such a great week. I can't wait. I'm excited for next week too. So thank you both. Um, I have Judy Dennis. Oh, every, so many comments are coming in. Thrilling to see Joanna acting. This was brave and breaking new ground. It was so compelling in a new way. Thank you. Devin, which one of these characters are more like you, assuming that they are? Um, well, that's not a hard question to answer. Savannah. Yes, I totally identify with with that little um, with that young woman. Yes, uh, that demon. I identify with some <laughs> part angel, part devil. Yes, and I want to say hi, Bermuda. Thanks for tuning in, Bermuda. <laughs> and is, me, I think we have like two extremes here. Thank you. Mwah. That is true. I I got a here. I'm actually gonna. Hello. Um, uh, we actually got an assortment of emails and one said, I'm dialing in from Bermuda. So I think that might be our, our, our farthest. That's, that's my brother-in-law, David, and my sister, Molly, and her family, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. I also want to say that um, Joanna's in New York, Kelsey is in Oklahoma, uh, and Devin, Martha, and myself are all here in LA. So we have a very coast-to-coast uh, -coast kind of team here at this time. Um, Let's see, I have, uh, well, this sort of overlaps with that last question. Devin, you're getting a lot of questions. What was your inspiration for Savannah? Was there anything, what, were you drawing from anything else besides this time in your life when you wrote it? Um, well, I think Savannah um, in her 20s uh, as an aspiring artist is at a, that, that moment where she doesn't know if she can achieve her great, great dream or if she is doomed to not achieve her great, great dreams. So I think that um, it's a very um, delicate moment in an artist's life and um, it can go either way. So I think that we're seeing Savannah deal with um, um, the 
dangers of her desire, but also will she fulfill it? That's, will she fulfill herself? And I think that that's a question um, we're addre I'm addressing in the play. Got it. I have a question for Joanna, actually. So Joanna, mm -hmm. I'm putting you on the spot. So you have a career that has gone from stage to screen and, and various other devices. So now you're seeing that we're doing something on Zoom. What is the, from an experiential perspective, um, where does this fit in this grand lexicon of all the places where you've worked? Oh, well, this is, this is really the first time that I have ever done uh, uh, any acting on Zoom. I've done a little teaching, but, uh, um, and it was, it was very challenging technically um, uh, because of the, uh, of the fact that you have to keep moving the script while you're speaking and while you want to look at your partner uh, and try to act at the same time. Um, but uh, uh, it really was a, a very positive experience for me because um, when, I, when I found out that I had to act to this, to Kelsey in this little tiny square uh, at the top of this script, I thought, how, how am I going to do that? But, but, you know, somehow or another, um, um, you kind of are able to create the world of the play um, uh, in this very unusual way. And um, I mean, I had no idea what the audience was seeing. Uh, and and so I'm I'm just kind of terrified to see the recording, <laughs> but but I really I really did enjoy the the whole team that we had and everybody was very supportive and um, and I actually uh, am now not so frightened of Zoom uh, and uh, it is certainly the future and uh, so I just. Um, uh, I'm very grateful to have had this experience. Great, as are we. Thank you, Joanna. And Kelsey, what about you? I mean, you're you're very working. You, you work, you film, and oh yeah, there's how, there's so many things going on right now. I feel very I know. lucky. So how it's, does how does this fit within your within your experience and so forth? It's just I count myself very lucky. That's all I can really say about it. I, I'm technologically challenged. I'm spiritually like 84 or something. So like doing all this is very challenging. But the, the women I worked with, I was telling my husband earlier. Also, by the way, I see all these questions popping up. That's my husband that played the man. So <laughs> thanks, everybody. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter Paul, he, 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 he works and has a job. So he's like doing uh, this to help us out. But that's my husband. So I didn't just pull some random guy off the street. Um, and he's so cute. But um, no, I just, I, I, I miss, I love theater uh, so much. It literally gives me, uh, it's like a blood transfusion. So even if it's on Zoom, it still feels like I'm, I'm being put like set back to life. And especially through this entire experience, we've been in Oklahoma with our family for the past two months. And, and I just feel a difference. Like I just feel, I feel blessed, lucky, happy, joyful, all the things. That's the idea. It needs to feel like theater and, and yeah. more, but absolutely. <laughs> so we have one more question and, uh, and then we'll probably call it a day until next week. So this is from Simon Glickman to everyone. It's clear that, the Our Town monologue that Anna can act, is there more behind, whoa, we just changed here. Is there more behind that than what we know in act one? Uh, uh, Simon, is, is Simon, are, I, I'm, are you asking me that question or Devin? He has it to everybody. So anyone who really wants to chime in. Devin, I think you should answer that question. Okay, sure. Um, I, I, um, she is a great actress, isn't she? And I think it's, um, Savannah suffers greatly when she sees that Anna is sure and Anna can do anything. And it, and the, the one thing Savannah has, or th that she thinks she has is that she's an artist and there, there's, um, Anna just topping her yet again. So, um, there's a, a lot happens in act two. That's all I'm going to say, and I want you to come back, so I'm not going to tell you anymore. 
Okay, and with that, let me just say to everybody, uh, today has been recorded. Uh, it will be up on our website uh, probably tomorrow or Sunday, and, uh, and you'll be able to review Act One. You can share it with other people who have not seen, who just for whatever reason could not make today. So they can catch up on Act One. We'll be back here next Friday at five uh, for Act Two, uh, Pacific, Pacific time. I had a few people call and say, I'm here, where is everything? And it was two o'clock and they were in New York. So it's Pacific time, um, five o'clock. Um, be sure to go to our website, smartphonetheater.com. We also have a tip jar. It's just, <laughs> just for your thing. And, uh, and that's it. I want to thank everybody so much. I look forward to working with you again. Oh, that's Santa Fe. And uh, yes, um, we have someone from Santa Fe. We have a lot, I mean, these comments are, are rolling in. So, um, I'm gonna to say to our, our wonderful cast and, and crew here, thank you guys so much. Um, I will see you soon. To our okay. wonderful audience, okay. thank you, you guys so much and we'll see you next week. Thank you, uh, Tom. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, actors. Love you. Bye. Bye.